This is Finn. Finn the Poodle, nine years old and loved to go to the beach. But he slipped out of his fence in September and he was poisoned. He's completely limp. He just wouldn't move. So their first thought was rat poisoning. This is Costa. She was poisoned just down the street. She was not flinching. She was just staring. Vets treated six dogs in the same neighborhood in the town of Stewart, all poisoned. Why in a short period of time were all these dogs showing up with the exact same symptoms and the exact same lab results? Well, Finn the Poodle would solve that mystery. He died at the vet and his necropsy was a bombshell. That he died from the toxic blue green algae. His, his yeah. body was a basically mess. infested with it. Scientists said South Florida River water was not safe to drink. And now you see what happens when dogs gave it a try. They were putting needles in her and her eyes weren't even blinking or flinching or anything. Ashley Guzzi said Costa slipped out of her fence and a neighbor saw her drinking from the St. Lucie River. It was maybe four or five hours. After she drank the sludge? Yes. That she collapsed? Yes. She walked a few feet and she was kind of rocking and then she just went over. And while the toxic water does this to pets, scientists who study the toxins, like Dr. Larry Brand, say it can also affect humans years after they've been exposed. And that's probably one of the more insidious parts of this thing is that there are no short-term symptoms. To see why, you have to see what's in this green slime and how our government feeds it. Look at this, that's the water in Florida right now. A state of emergency in Florida. Uh, well, phew, I wish I hadn't splashed that on myself. You sort of forget how close, clean, and marvelous Florida really is. First politicians sell Florida as a paradise for clean water and cheap subdivisions. Then we see how those things don't mix. I, it's predominantly the commercial, the residential, and the agricultural operations north of the lake. Running from Polk County through Orlando. All the way down through Orlando into the lake. Leaking septic tanks and chemical fertilizer leach into Lake Okeechobee, where it feeds these blooms of cyanobacteria we call toxic algae. And then to prevent flooding around the lake, our government pumps it east and west through our rivers and estuaries, where it emits a toxin called microcystin that struck the pets like venom. All the dogs had high levels of microcystin in um, the urine and the blood. Or can sicken people over time. So this is what people are exposed to. Well, scientists link microcystin to liver damage. The cyanobacteria also produce a toxin called BMAA that they've correlated with brain damage. The BMAA in these blooms can lead to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and ALS. In Guam, researchers associated a spike in ALS-like disease in the 1950s to people who ate fruit bats contaminated with high levels of this BMAA. And when Dr. Brand tested shellfish in South Florida, he found they had more BMAA than the bats. I found some uh, fish and crabs which had concentrations of BMA twice as high as the fruit bats of Guam. You have no idea you've been exposed to it, and then 10 or 20 years later, you might come down with a neurodegenerative disease. That's a theory that scientists still debate, but there is no doubt the water flowing out of Lake Okeechobee is a toxic mess. I would not eat those fish. Which brings us to our trip to the lake. How many fish did you catch here? Uh, about 12. Lots of and two men at opposite sides of the table. A lot of people get sick. <laughs> yeah. So Ronaldo Diaz with the nonprofit Waterkeepers is testing the levels of toxins in the lake. Yeah, the station needs to do something about it. Right. While Pastor Rob Johnson is preparing his feast. We have a toxic water crisis. You know that. Yeah, I've heard about it. I've heard about it. But, but you, you wouldn't want to err on the side of caution? Of course, of course. But we're not, are we there now? Are we there now? Would you go uh, in a I'm going to go with yes. Ronaldo Diaz says there's just not enough communication. You see signs showing where to dump the fish guts, but no signs warning about the toxins in the water. So if you saw a sign posted said warning cyanobacteria, you wouldn't eat no, the fish. No, I wouldn't eat the fish. 
And when the water looked like split pea soup, you know, guacamole, I still saw people at the fillet tables pulling fish out of these waters, still eating them. But I saw a couple kids jumping in the water and swimming around in that green sludge, so it's pretty, uh, pretty tough thing to deal with. After scrapping septic tank inspections and regulations meant to protect the water, the state's solution under outgoing Governor Scott has been to wait for federal money to build more reservoirs while in the meantime pumping tainted water deep underground, far beneath our supply of drinking water, though environmentalists fear it could still mix into our drinking water. Can you guarantee there would not be any break or leak in these wells so that this water could leach into our water supply? What I can tell you is that this type of technology has been around for a very long period of time. Offshore drilling has also been around for a very long time, and as we saw with the BP disaster, it can fail. Do you know for sure you couldn't have a break or a leak that could cause this to seep into the aquifer? Well, what I can tell you is that the technology exists for these types of wells to move water into the boulder zone. Back at the lake, Ronaldo Diaz was not testing water in the slugs of green slime. He took samples where the water appeared to be clear. But anywhere between five to 10, you can see the line. And he still found microcystin approaching the level considered too toxic to touch. The range is five to 10. What's considered safe to drink? Safe to drink would be one part per billion. Microcystin is still present in the water and it's present to a significant amount. Again, that's the liver toxin. No one routinely tests for BMAA, the brain toxin. And Dr. Brand, who found it in our food chain, is now studying whether it can also get into the air. Even though I can't say for sure the BMA is in the air, it certainly is a possibility. While the families in Stewart are left to wait and worry. It's difficult to understand that it could get to this point um, without any resolution. Knowing their own pets are also their canaries in the coal mine. What worries you the most? That this issue is not going to be fixed. Your heart sinks. You, you feel helpless.